Find a comfortable seat on your mat. Being sure to pull the flesh away from those sit bones so that you're starting off nice and stable. Draw that navel in towards the spine and allow the crown of the head to reach towards the sky. Bring your shoulder blades together and down the back and place the hands on the thighs, palms up and close your eyes. Start to become aware of the breath, allowing it to flow in through the nose and out through the nose. And then start to bring the breath into balance by making the inhale the same length as the exhale. So if your inhale is for a count of four, your exhale would be for a count of four. If your inhale is for a count of six or eight, your exhale would be for that same amount. With each inhale, allow the spine to grow tall. And then as you exhale, you'll keep the length in the spine, but just begin to soften. Are you clenching your teeth? If so, relax that jaw. Are the shoulders hiked up towards the ears? If so, relax them. Today's class is focusing on the IT band. And that is a long piece of connective tissue or fascia that runs along the outside of the leg from the hip to the knee and the shin bone. The IT band helps to stabilize and move the side of the knee while protecting the outer thigh. Some people will suffer from what's called IT band syndrome, and that's caused by excessive friction from the IT band being overly tight. And it's primarily an overuse injury. So if you're doing the same types of activities over and over again. Now, if you suffer from IT band syndrome, you may not feel it where the IT band is. You might feel it in the knees or the hips. So I wanted to do a class on this because oftentimes we have tension and tightness and we don't even know it. We may think, oh, I have arthritis in my knees, when really it could be an overly tight IT band. Of course, when in doubt, consult with a physician. Now, if you don't have any issues with your IT band, this class is also great for you. We'll work on stretching and strengthening. Let's bring those hands together at the heart in Anjali Mudra, prayer position. We'll breathe together three times and on the third exhale, we'll share the sound of Om. Take a nice deep breath in through the nose. Exhale through the nose. Inhale. And exhale. And for the third time together, inhale. Om. Bow the head. Place the hands on the thigh, softly open your eyes looking forward. We're going to start today laying on our backs so you can just move everything out of the way and lay down comfortably on your back. Your legs can be extended out nice and long, arms by your sides. So we'll maintain the balanced breath. And as you inhale, have the arms come up overhead until the thumbs touch the floor behind you. And as you exhale, bring those arms back down by your sides. You're moving with your breath at your own pace.
The next time the arms are by your sides, you can pause there. Bend your knees, placing the soles of the feet on the mat. As you inhale, you'll press down through the feet, engage the glutes, and lift the hips. And then as you exhale, you'll lower your hips. Inhale, glutes engage, hips lift. Exhale, hips lower. The next time you lower the hips, pause there. Extend the left leg out nice and long. Draw the right knee in towards the chest. Place that left hand on top of the right knee and you're just going to draw that right knee towards the left. And you can roll on the side a bit just until you feel a stretch in that right glute. Come back to laying on your back. Extend the right leg out nice and long. Draw the left knee in towards the chest. Place the right hand on the left knee. And then you're going to take that left knee across the body just until you feel the stretch in that left glute. Come back to laying on your back. Extend that left leg long to meet the right. Bend both knees, placing the soles of the feet on the mat. Cross the right ankle over the left thigh. Take the hands around your left thigh. Draw those legs in towards the chest. So again, you should feel a nice stretch in that right glute, right hip. Focus on the breath here. Lower the left foot, followed by the right, and then cross that left ankle over the right thigh. Take those hands around the right thigh, draw the legs in towards the chest. You may find one side is tighter than the other. Lower your right foot, followed by the left. Hug the knees into the chest, and we're just going to start to rock head to tail. And then we'll bring ourselves up to sitting in Dandasana, staff pose. So the legs are extended out nice and long, navel in towards the spine. We can adjust those sit bones as needed and place the hands on the mat. Go ahead and close your eyes here. Come back to that balanced breath. Inhale and exhale are equal. Bring your hands behind you. So you're leaning back just a little bit. Bend the knees and cross your right ankle over the left thigh. Flex the right foot. And then you're just going to move the right knee away from you slightly. So the right foot is flexed. The right knee is reaching towards the space in front of you. Relax the right leg. Place the foot on the mat. And then we'll cross that left ankle over the right thigh. So flex the left foot and take that left knee towards the space in front of you. Remember to breathe. Good. 
relax the left leg, place the left foot on the mat next to the right. So we're going to keep the knees bent, but come to sit up on the sit bones. Extend the arms out in front of you. Take a breath in, and as you exhale, you're going to begin to twist to the left as you place the left elbow, I'm sorry, the right elbow to the outside of that left knee. Just reaching the fingertips forward, focusing on the breath. We'll slowly come back to center, hands come to the heart. Extend those arms out in front of you, and on an exhale, begin to twist to the right as you place that left elbow to the outside of the right knee. Breathe here. Come back to center bringing the hands to the heart. Let the soles of the feet come together as those knees open up out to the sides, adjusting the sit bones as needed. You can hold on to those ankles, press down through the sit bones, inhale, create length in the spine. If it's okay for you, you can hinge forward at the hip. Slowly bring yourself back up. We'll come to all fours, hands and knees. Remember that we want those knees to be just hip width apart. The knees are slightly behind the hips, hands shoulder width apart, and they are slightly forward of the shoulders. Before we move on, just check in with your back. I automatically get this big arch in my back because my pelvis is tipping forward and I'm not engaging my abdominal muscles. So I'm going to draw my navel towards the spine and tuck my tailbone slightly. Take a breath in here and as you exhale, shift the hips to the heels, the chest to the thighs, coming to extended child's pose, elbows up off of the mat. As you inhale, come back up all fours, navel to the spine, exhale back, inhale up. Continue moving with your breath. Notice if you're clenching the jaw, if so, create a space between the top and bottom rows of teeth. The next time you come to all fours, you can pause there. Walk your hands towards your body so you come up to kneeling and step your left foot forward. On the inhale, the right arm sweeps up, left hand can be on the hip, and as you exhale, you're going to tip to the left. Feel the stretch in the right side of the body. Slowly bring yourself back up. Place the right hand on the hip. Step the left knee back to meet the right knee. And then we'll step forward with the right foot. Find your stability. Inhale, left arm sweeps up. Exhale, tip to the right, this time feeling the stretch in the left side of the body. Slowly 
bring yourself up, place the left hand on the left hip, step that right knee back to meet the left. Come back to all fours, hands and knees. As you inhale, the right arm sweeps out parallel to the mat. And if it's okay for you, that left leg sweeps out. Take a breath in. As you exhale, you're going to take your right elbow and left knee together beneath the belly. As you inhale, extend nice and long. Exhale, elbow to knee beneath your belly. Inhale, extend. Three more on your own. When you finish, you can lower the right hand, lower the right knee, I'm sorry, left knee. Walk your hands back towards the body, coming up to kneeling. Take your left leg out to the side. The toes can either point straight to the sky or you can have the sole of the foot on the mat with the toes pointing forward. Either one is fine. Take your right hand, reach up towards the sky. And as you exhale, begin to tip to the left. If you'd like, this left hand can just slide down the left leg to deepen the stretch. Breathe here. Slowly bring yourself back up. Hands come to the hips. Left knee comes back to meet the right knee. Come back to all fours, hands and knees. On the next inhale, the left arm sweeps out parallel to the mat, thumb points to the sky. If it's okay for you, the right leg sweeps out. Take a breath in as you exhale, draw that left elbow to the right knee beneath the belly. Inhale, extend nice and long. Exhale, draw together. Inhale, extend. Three more on your own. When you finish, you can lower your left hand, lower the right knee, and start to walk the hands back towards the body, coming to kneeling. Take your right leg out to the side. Again, you can have the toes point straight ahead or to the sky. Left arm reaches up, and as you exhale, begin to tip to the right. The hand can slide down the leg if you'd like. Breathe here. Slowly bring yourself back up. Hands come to the hips. Bring that right knee in to meet the left. Next, you're going to take your right leg forward. So the sole of the foot is on the mat. And then you're going to extend it even longer, having the toes point to the sky. Square your hips towards the front of the room. Navel draws in. As you inhale, arms sweep up. And as you exhale, you'll hinge from those hips, folding forward over that right leg. Place the right hand to the inside of that right leg. Sweep the left arm up towards the sky. Lower the left hand back down to your mat. Walk your hands back towards your body, bringing your hands to your hips. 
bend the right knee, sole of the foot comes to the mat, and then you can bring that right knee to meet the left. Step that left foot forward, bringing the foot to the floor. Then extend that leg long, toes point to the sky. Square the hips to the front. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, hinge forward over that left leg. Bring your hands down to the mat. Place your left hand to the inside of that left foot and sweep the right arm up towards the sky. Focus on your breath here. Lower the right hand back to the mat. Start to walk the hands back towards your body. Place the sole of that left foot on the mat and then take the left knee back to meet the right. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, hinge forward, coming to child's pose and rest here. Come back to the balanced breath. And now we'll come to standing. So we're going to stand in Tadasana Mountain Pose. So the feet are just femur width apart. They're parallel to each other. They look like an 11. Hips stacked on knees, knees stacked on ankles. Keep the knees soft. We don't want to lock them. Crown of the head reaches towards the sky. Shoulder blades together and down the back. Tadasana, mountain pose. Cross your right ankle over the left and you can have a soft bend in the knee. As you inhale, arms sweep up. And as you exhale, you're going to begin to tip to the right. Slowly bring yourself back up. And as you exhale, fold forward. Relax the head and neck here. While you're in your forward fold, uncross the ankles, bringing those feet back to femur width apart. Place the hands on your hips, press down through those feet and bring yourself back up to Tadasana, mountain pose. Cross the left ankle over the right, again, soft knees. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, tip to the left. Breathe here. It's perfectly fine to have the hands on the hips if that's better for you. Slowly bring yourself back up and as you exhale, hinge forward. Relax the head and neck once again. While you're in your forward fold, we will uncross the feet, bringing them back to femur width apart. Place the hands on the hips, press down through the feet to bring yourself up. So we're going to stretch the quads and this takes some balance, but you can feel free to hold on to something if you have something nearby to hold on to. So we're going to shift the weight to the left foot. Keep the knee soft. Hands can come to the heart. Bend the right knee. See if you can reach back with the right hand and just grasp the top of the foot and pull the foot in towards your glute. Breathe here. Slowly lower 
the leg. Hands can come back to the heart. This time we'll shift the weight to the right foot. Soft knees. Left knee bends. See if you can reach back with the hand to grasp the top of the foot and then draw that heel in towards your glutes. Slowly lower the foot and come back to Tadasana, Mountain Pose. From here, we're going to take a nice wide-legged stance. The outer edges of the feet are parallel to the outer edges of your mat. Inhale, arms sweep up, and then as you exhale, you're going to hinge from the hips, folding forward. You can bring your hands down to the mat, or if you have blocks, you could put your hands on top of blocks. Either way is fine. Relax the head and neck here. Start to walk the hands over towards that left foot. Bring the hands back to center. And then walk the hands over towards the right foot. Hands come back to center. Place your hands on your hips, press down through the feet to bring yourself back up to your wide-legged stance. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, hinge from the hips, folding forward. So here, you're going to place your left hand on the mat right beneath the face, and you can also do that on top of a block. And then sweep the right arm up towards the sky as you twist open. Lower the hand to the mat. Place it on the floor right under your face. Sweep the left arm up towards the sky. Lower the hand back down to the mat. Place your hands on your hips. Press down through the feet to bring yourself up. And then we'll step our feet back to Tadasana, Mountain Pose. From here, we're going to come back to sit in Dandasana, Staff Pose. In a little while, we'll be using a strap so if you have one, great. If not, if you have a tie or a belt or something, you can grab that. And if you don't have any, that's fine too. But we'll, use, we'll be using that in a little bit. So we'll come down to sitting in Dandasana staff pose. Extend the legs out nice and long. Adjust the sit bones as needed. Shoulder blades together and down the back and the hands rest on the ground. Close your eyes here. Come back to your balanced breath. Inhale and exhale are equal. Go ahead and open your eyes. You're going to take your left hand and reach for that right foot, but you can bend the knee to do that. You're going to grab onto the right foot at the pinky toe side and have your left thumb facing down. Your other hand is right by your side. Ground down through your sit bones. You're going to extend up through the spine as you sit up tall and that foot will come up off of the ground. Breathe here. If you'd like, you can take your opposite hand and reach to the space behind you. Slowly 
slowly. Bring yourself back to face front. You can bend the knee and extend the leg nice and long. Now we'll do the other side. Take your right hand, bend the left knee slightly. You're going to grasp the outer edge of the foot, thumb points down. Opposite hand on the hip. Root down through the sit bones, and then you'll begin to extend through the crown of the head as you sit up nice and tall, straightening the leg as much as you can. And then if you'd like, you can add the deeper twist. So you'll begin to twist, reaching your opposite hand to the space behind you and breathing. Slowly come back to center, bend the knee, and then extend that leg nice and long. We'll come to lay on our bellies. Lay down comfortably on your belly. You can just cross the forearms in front of you, rest the forehead. Reestablish the balanced breath if it's gotten away from you. Bring your hands so that they're right next to your chest and then hug the elbows into the body. Press your hands into the mat and then press the hands towards the feet so that the whole body shifts forward as you rise. You can rise to baby cobra, cobra, or lifting those thighs up off of the mat, upward facing dog. If you're an up dog, lower the thighs down to the mat and then we'll all lower down. Cross the forearms in front of you, rest your forehead. Bend your left knee. See if you can reach back and grasp the top of the foot with the right hand. If it's okay for you, you'll begin to lift the left thigh away from the mat, extend the left arm nice and long, and then press the left foot into the hand, lifting the chest. Slowly lower down, release the left foot, Cross the forearms in front of you, rest the forehead. Bend the right knee. Reach around with the left hand and see if you can grasp the top of the foot. Extend that right arm out nice and long out in front of you. Start to lift the right thigh away from the mat and then press the foot into the hand to lift the chest. Slowly lower down, release the foot, cross the forearms in front of you, rest the forehead. onto your right side. You can simply hold your head in your hand, relaxing. Bend your knees, legs stacked one on top of the other. Then extend that top leg nice and long. Should be your left. Here, we're going to lift the top leg and lower the top leg. But we're going to add on a little bit. So instead of just lifting straight up and down, I want you to kind of lift diagonally, thinking if uh, you're lifting it back and up diagonally. 
So we're lifting and lowering. Lifting, lowering. You'll start to feel that in the side of the hip, side of the glute. Make sure your toes are pointing straight ahead. Three more. Nice job. Let's switch sides. So now we'll roll to the left side. You can cradle your head in your hand. Bend your knees to start and then extend the top leg out nice and long. So we're not just lifting straight up and down. We're going to lift up and back and then come back to start. Up and back, squeezing here. We want to keep the rest of the body as still as possible. Three more. When you finish, you can roll over onto your back. If you have your strap, you'll want to grab that. We're going to be doing Supta Padangustasana 1, 2, and 3. They can absolutely be done without a strap. I just usually teach it with a strap, um, and then you'll have the option of whether or not you want to use it. So like I said, if you don't have a strap or a belt, it's not the end of the world. If you do, you will loop the strap around the ball of the right foot. Lay down on your back, both legs extended out nice and long. And if you don't have a strap, you'll just do the same things that I'm doing, just with your arms out to the sides. As you inhale, the right leg lifts up off of the mat, sole of the foot looks towards the sky. So here, if you have a strap, you can use it to pull the leg in a little closer to your face than normal. And if you don't have a strap, you can just use your hand. So we're not trying to do anything drastic here, just a simple stretch in the back of the leg. Lower the right leg down to the ground. And then place both reins of the strap in the right hand. Left arm comes out like a T, palm faces the sky. As you inhale, the right leg lifts. And as you exhale, the right leg opens up out to the right. So we wanna keep this left sit bone rooted down. Breathe here. This is Supta Padangustasana two. Slowly draw that right leg back up. As you exhale, lower it down to the ground. So the next one is where we're really gonna feel that nice stretch where that IT band is. So place both reins of the strap in the left hand. The right arm comes out like a T, palm faces the sky. As you inhale, that left leg lifts. As you exhale, the left leg crosses over the body as you roll onto the left hip. So some people are super flexible and their foot is on the ground, but I want you to keep it up so that your leg is as parallel to the ground as you can get it. So feel that stretch going from the hip down the side of the leg. Focus on your breath here. Slow. 
slowly draw the right leg back up and as you exhale, lower it down to the ground. Now we'll switch legs. So place the strap around the ball of the left foot. Both reins of the strap in the left hand, right arm out like a T, palm faces the sky. Oh, actually this time we're hold, both hands are holding onto it. Sorry about that. Left leg lifts, sole of the foot looks towards the sky. If you have your strap, you can use that to just gently feel the stretch in the back of that left leg. Lower the left leg down to the ground, place both reins of the strap in the left hand. Right arm comes out like a T, palm faces the sky. As you inhale, the left leg lifts, and as you exhale, it opens up out to the left as you root down through that right sit bone. Reach through bro both heels and breathe. Slowly bring the left leg back up, and as you exhale, lower it down to the mat. Both reins of the strap go in the right hand, left arm out like a T. As you inhale, the left leg lifts, and as you exhale, it crosses over the body as you roll onto that right hip. This is Supta Padangustasana 3, and you can really feel that stretch going down the side of the leg. Slowly draw that left leg back up, remove the strap, lower the leg to the ground. You can hug both knees into the chest. Lower the soles of the feet to the mat, cross the right ankle over the left thigh. Once again, take the hands around the left thigh Draw those legs into the chest. Lower the left foot to the mat followed by the right, and then we'll cross the left ankle over the right thigh. Take the hands around the right thigh, draw those legs in towards the chest. Lower the right foot to the mat, followed by the left, and hug both knees into the chest. You can rock side to side here. Give yourself a little back massage. We're going to begin to transition into Shavasana, which is the last pose of our class. If there's anything that you need to be comfortable for the next five minutes, please feel free to grab that. Once you have what you need, you'll just come to lay on your back with the legs extended out nice and long. Your arms will be by your sides, the palms face the sky. And let the arms be a few inches away from the body. Shavasana is a time for us to relax. We don't need to ponder any deep thoughts. We don't need to practice any particular breathing. We just need to relax and absorb the practice. Relax the jaw by creating a space between the top and bottom rows of teeth. Let the tongue fall away from the roof of the mouth and let your eyes just rest in their sockets. 
Resist the urge to make subtle movement. Allow the natural breath to take over. Rest in Shavasana. Slowly start to deepen the breath, becoming aware of your body and becoming aware of the space around you. Start to make any subtle movements that feel good, like wiggling the fingers and wiggling the toes. You can rotate and turn the head from side to side. Even open your mouth wide to stretch the jaw. Rotate through the wrists and the ankles and turn that head gently from side to side. And bend the knees and just let those legs sway from side to side. 
and then roll to the right side in the fetal position, and we'll stay there for a few breaths. Keeping those eyes closed, if you'd like, you can use the arms to bring yourself back up to a comfortable seated position. Once you get there, you can bring the hands together at the heart in Anjali Mudra. Thank you so much for sharing your practice with me today. I hope you enjoyed learning how to stretch and support that IT band. We all carry tension in various parts of the body and sometimes we don't even know it. And the more we practice, the more awareness we have about our body and how it interacts with the space around it. So we can start to become more in tune with how different things are connected and how one part of the body could affect another part. So I encourage you to keep practicing. May you be happy, May you be peaceful. May you be free from suffering. May you have ease and well-being. Namaste. Thank you all so much. Have a wonderful day.